Hi, this is George from The Return of the King. This is the first of many videos that I will be producing explaining why I believe that the rapture will occur on June 15th of 2022, which is the 15th day of the third month on the Jewish calendar. This is my opinion based on the evidence that I have, and I have a lot. This is just the very beginning. Each of you will have to weigh the evidence I present over the coming months and make up your own mind. This is just a preview, a small fraction of the evidence. I'm going to start with the account of the 153 fish. It's in the account of the 153 fish that Jesus tells us when he is coming. The account of the 153 fish is in the Gospel of John. It's in John chapter 21 verses 1 through 14. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others, two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and they got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, do you have any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So we have Jesus on the shore at dawn. They have caught nothing, and he tells them to cast the net on the right side of the boat. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved therefore said to Peter, It is the Lord. They go to the shore to meet Jesus, and then Jesus asks them to bring some of the fish they have just caught. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work, and threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came into the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far off from the land, but about a hundred yards. When they got out on the land, they saw a charcoal fire in place with fish laid out on it. And bread. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of fish, 153 of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. So why are we given this exact number of fish? It's because Jesus is communicating something of value to us. He's telling, uh, telling us on the Jewish calendar the day and the month he is coming for his bride. This is what the heavens look like at dawn or just before dawn on the 15th day of the third month every year. This is the view from Jerusalem, looking south and east. Circled are the constellations of the rapture. They involve Aries, which in Hebrew is Tale, meaning lamb, representing Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. To the right of Aries is Pisces, the symbol of the Christian. Since the beginning has been the fish, the early Christians were called Pisces and Ichthus. The first time Jesus multiplied the, lo the fishes and loaves, there were two fishes and five barley loaves. The two fishes represent the Jew and the Gentile. The five barley lo loaves represent grace. Five is the number of grace in the Bible. The Jew and the Gentile saved by grace. This is why we see two fishes in the heavens. When the calendar is calculated correctly, as it was at the time of Moses, the Feast of Weeks, also known as Pentecost, is always the 15th day of the third month. The Jewish calendar in use today and at the time of Christ is and was a mix of the Jewish and pagan calendars. What this does is cause the Sabbaths to be off. The Sabbaths are always the 7th, 14th, 21st, and the 28th day, with day one being the sighting of the crescent moon. This causes the day of Pentecost to be off by about a week, but that's for another day. What Jesus is telling us is that the harvest of the saints will occur on the harvest feast, the feast of weeks, 
also known as Pentecost. Cetus, the dragon in the sea, represents Satan, the devil who wants to devour the Christian represented by the fish. Isaiah 27.1 In that day the Lord, with his hard and great and strong sword, will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, Leviathan, the twisting serpent, and he will slay the dragon that is in the sea. The dragon we see right here. Now if you notice, the band of the fishes is on the neck of the dragon. The Holy Spirit-filled church or Christian is what restrains Satan. And in 2 Thessalonians 2.7, For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains it will do so until he is out of the way. The Hebrew language, when originally written, was pictographs, pictures, and it reads from right to left. When we look at the heavens, what do we see? We see pictures, and they also read from right to left, as you must look south to see these constellations. Taurus represents Christ the Judge, the beginning of the tribulation. The rapture occurs before Christ pours out his judgment on the world. What is the account of the 153 fish all about? I'll let Gary Stearman and J.R. Church tell you all about it. Let's see by James Harrison. J.R., the number 153, I just have to say that when Jesus stood on that shore, prepared breakfast, fire of coals, what you have is a complete metaphor for the end of the age. Mm -hmm. You have the sea of humanity, the net full of fish, the fire on the coals, which may be emblematic of the tribulation fire prior to the coming of the kingdom. It says you, the 153 fish are saved from that tribulation saved fire. Saved from that tribulation fire. What do you Free think tribulation about that? tribulation rapture, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and it's on the morning of the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples. That's encouraging. To me, that says that sometime in the next few years, just before the turn or around the turn of the millennium, uh, at the dawning of the third millennium of human history, we can expect to be gathered in. What I want to show you next is the constellations that make up the tribulation. They begin with Taurus, Christ the Judge. In the book of Revelation, Jesus tells us he's the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Revelation chapter, Revelation chapter 22, verse 13. In Hebrew, the Alpha is the Aleph, and the Omega is the Tav. The Tav is the cross. Taurus is an ox, a ream, slightly smaller than an elephant. Here's a quote from Joseph A. Zeiss from his book, The Gospel and the Stars. Its strength and speed were very great, and it was so fierce that it did not spare man or beast when it caught sight of them. It was wholly intractable. It could not be habituated to man, no matter how young it was taken. Towards his church, he is the lamb, but toward the unsanctified world, he finally becomes the terrible ream. What we see in the heavens is that the lamb takes us home before Christ becomes the terrible ream judging the world. The tribulation begins in the fall on Rosh Hashanah, also known as the Feast of Trumpets, Yom Terah. The tribulation begins when the Lion of the tribe of Judah, which we see right here, rising in the east before the sunrise, opens the scroll and its seven seals. And one of the elders said to me, Weep no more, behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, has conquered, so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. From Revelation 5.5 5. The first seal is opened, and the four horsemen are released. The beginning of the tribulation. If we go back and look at the same set of constellations two and a half weeks before the rapture, we find a thin crescent moon in Aries, which was visible at dawn on this day. In this part of the story, the moon represents the bride, the Christian. By tomorrow morning, it will have moved into Taurus, Christ the Judge, and will no longer be visible. It disappeared. When Christ began to pour his judgment on the earth, we are not here. It takes seven days for the moon to travel from Aries to Cancer. Cancer represents heaven. The tribulation lasts seven years. 
A Jewish wedding lasts seven days. Our wedding lasts seven years. The constellation Gemini represents that wedding. The moon, representing the bride of Christ, comes from Genesis 37.9, where Joseph dreams of the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowing down to him. His father rebukes him, saying, Shall I and your mother and brothers indeed come to bow before you? The moon represents the mother, a woman. The church is called the bride of Christ, and the bride is a woman. Jupiter, representing the Christian, is from the Revelation 12 sign, which we will look at in a moment, is in the constellation of Pisces, the Christian. Mars, representing the red dragon of Revelation 12.3, is in the constellation of the dragon in the sea, Cetus. Revelation 12.3 and 4 begins with, And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon. And then it goes on to say, And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. This final conjunction between Jupiter and Mars symbolizes this last attempt of Satan to attack the Christians before the rapture. In the account of the 153 fish, Jesus is telling us he is coming some year on the 15th day of the third month on the Jewish calendar. So if this interpretation is true, the next date is June 15th, 2022. This is the view of the heavens in the morning on that day. The sun, moon, and planets all travel through the heavens, through these constellations, staring very staying very close to this yellow arc, which is called the ecliptic. They travel in this direction, from right to left, just like the written Hebrew language. In the constellations of the rapture, we find the bright morning star, Venus, which we are told in Revelation 22.16 is Jesus. Venus is in the constellation of Aries, Tale in Hebrew, the Lamb, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The planet Jupiter in this scene represents the Christian from the Revelation 12 sign. It's in the constellation of Pisces, which represents the Christian, the believer, the church. Mars, representing the red dragon, is in the constellation of the dragon, the dragon in the sea, Cetus. Taurus marks the beginning of the tribulation. Venus is beginning to leave Aries and head into the constellation of Taurus, Christ the Judge. Two wandering stars, Venus and Mercury and the star Aldebaran, form a three-star alignment that precisely matches a three-star alignment found in the Revelation 12 sign. The moon representing both the bride and Messiah is above the tail of the scorpion. When Jesus rose from the dead in 32 AD, the moon was in the exact same location, above the tail of the scorpion. In 1 Corinthians 15, 54 and 55, this is what we, re we read. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? This is the Revelation 12 sign that appeared in September of 2017. And a great sign appeared in the heavens, a woman clothed with the sun, the sun is at her shoulder, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. The constellation Leo is made up of nine stars. Three wandering stars, Venus, Mars, and Mercury, complete the crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains in the agony of giving birth. The planet Jupiter represents the male child. The planet enters the body of the constellation, which is formed by four stars. It enters approximately nine months prior, staying in the body of Virgo by going into a retrograde motion, forming a loop within the body, then exiting between the legs of the constellation like a normal human birth. The planet does not actually go backwards in its orbit, but appears to go backwards due to the motion of the Earth relative to the motion of Jupiter. This sign was fulfilled on September 23, 2017. 
She gave birth to a male child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was caught up, the word is harpazo in the Greek, raptured to God and his throne. In Revelation 2, 26 through 28, Jesus says this, The one who conquers and who keeps my work until the end, to him I will give authority over all the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. As when earthen pots are broken in pieces, even as I myself has received authority from my Father, and I will give him the morning star. Jesus is telling us that we're going to rule with him during the millennium. Now, Jupiter is an interesting planet. It's a striped planet with a wound. In Isaiah 53, 5, we read, He was wounded for our transgressions, and by his stripes we are healed. The child in the Revelation 12 sign is raptured to God and his throne. In Revelation 3.21, Jesus says, The one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne, as I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. And around the throne are four living creatures, Revelation 4.6. There are four large Galilean moons that orbit the planet Jupiter. They represent the four living creatures. The four Galilean moons are named after their discoverer, Galileo. Jesus was a Galilean. Jesus came from the town of Nazareth in Galilee. Jupiter has over 75 smaller moons that circle the planet. I heard around the throne the voice of many angels numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice this is what these smaller moons represent when we get raptured where do we go in revelation 12 5 we read she gave birth to a male child one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron but her child was caught up raptured to god and to his throne what you see on the left is the Revelation 12 sign at dawn on September 23rd. On the right, you see the constellations of the rapture on June 15th, 2022. When we overlay the three stars from each day next to each other, we see that they match almost exactly, an extremely close match. Let's take another look. We're zoomed in a little bit more. You can see just how close of a match this is. It's close enough to see the connection between the two days. In the account of the 153 fish, Jesus is telling us when he is coming for his bride. Those who have put their trust in him for salvation, the Christian. When we look in the heavens on the next possible date for the rapture to occur, which is June 15th, 2022, we see in the heavens what appears to be a pictographic story representing the day of the rapture. We see a connection to the Revelation 12 sign, the first sign of many signs in the heavens of the coming rapture of the church. Starting in April of 2022, a series of conjunctions, an eclipse, and the appearance of a comet will occur in the constellations of the rapture prior to the rapture. That comet which passes through the constellations of the rapture will be in the tail of the dragon Draco on the day of the rapture. On the day of the rapture, Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 through 5, will all have been fulfilled. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on his head seven diadems. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to earth. On the day of the rapture, the verse, his tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to earth, will be fulfilled. In May, before the rapture, the comet will pass through the head of Cetus, the dragon in the sea. The head of Cetus has either six or seven stars, the seven stars representing the seven heads. At the time of the rapture, the red planet Mars will be in the constellation, making the dragon in the sea a red dragon. It will then pass into the constellation of Taurus, a horned animal whose body is made up of ten or eleven stars, and at the same time being near the Pleiades, a cluster of seven stars, fulfilling this part of the verse, and ten horns, and on his heads, seven diadems. 
On the day of the rapture, Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 through 5 will all have been fulfilled. On the day of the rapture, his tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to earth will be fulfilled. There are seven objects visible to the naked eye that travel along the ecliptic. The sun, the moon, and five planets. Six of the seven are involved in telling the story of the rapture on the day of the rapture, plus a comet for a total of seven. In the account of the 153 fish, there were seven disciples. Seven is the number of completion. There is no day in the near future that even comes close to what we see here in this day in the heavens. And I'm just getting started with the evidence as to why I believe this is the day. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words, whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth, and their, wor and their words to the end of the world. Psalm 19, verses 1-4 through 4. Jesus tells us there will be signs in sun and moon and stars, and on the earth distress of nations in perplexity, because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of heaven will be shaken. This is from Luke chapter 21, verses 25 and 26. We just looked at a series of signs in the heavens that I believe tell us the day of the rapture. The question is then, are we interpreting what we see in the heavens on the day of the rapture a reasonable interpretation? The way to find out if this interpretation is correct is to look at Christ's birth, death and resurrection, and compare what we see in the heavens then into what we see now. Do we see a common pattern, a common thread between the past and now? The answer is yes, and that's what I'll present in the next video. We'll start by looking at the feast days, more correctly, the appointed times, as only three of the seven are true feast days. Two of the three are on the, on the 15th day of the month. That would be the Feast of Booths and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So it makes sense that the third feast day to be fulfilled is on the 15th, and that's a feast of weeks, and this is, the, this is when the rapture occurs. On the feast days of which there are three, all males are required to attend. They are meetings with God. The feast days are being fulfilled in order, starting with the birth of Christ. A very strong case can be made for Jesus being born on tabernacles based on just looking at the Bible. When we look at the heavens, they confirm this as the day of Christ's birth. We'll look at Christ's death and then his resurrection, at noon on the day he's on the cross, the sun goes dark for three hours. This is a supernatural eclipse. Then the constellation of Aries, which is in, which in Hebrew is Tale, the Lamb, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, will be visible in the heavens as the Lamb of God sheds his blood on the cross to pay the price for our sins. At the same time, a total lunar eclipse is occurring on the other side of the planet, not visible to them, but to us. Because as the prophet Daniel had said, near the end, knowledge would increase. This knowledge is for us. The blood moon occurs in the constellation of Libra, the scales, judgment. The Hebrews associate the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet with the constellation Libra. The last letter is the Tav. It's a cross in the original Hebrew written language. To the Jews at the time, the moon represented Messiah. So at the same time Jesus is on the cross, we have a blood moon representing Messiah in the constellation Libra, which is associated with the Tav, the cross a precise image of the Messiah on the cross, shedding his blood for you and me. This chart combines the appointed times and what you see in the heavens. The full moon and Venus both represent Christ. The constellation Aries, which is Tale in Hebrew, the lamb, the lamb that was slain. Before the tribulation, either the moon or Venus is in the constellation of the lamb during key events involving Jesus. Venus is always visible in the morning sky in all cases. Jesus tells us he's the bright morning star in the book of Revelation. When Jesus resurrects and the resurrection rapture occurs, the moon is in the same location. It's above the tail of the scorpion. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? Why are the nations required to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles during the millennium and not the Feast of Trumpets? Because Jesus was born on tabernacles, and the heavens confirm this. The moon representing the Messiah is in the constellation of the Lamb, Tale. The bright morning star representing Jesus is in the womb of Virgo, the Virgin. In the morning sky, you can see the bright morning star, which represents Jesus, 
in the womb of the virgin Virgo. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. This is Matthew 1, 23. This is pretty simple to understand. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it, until it receives the early and late rains. You also be patient. Establish in your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Jesus is coming. It's just going to be a little longer wait than most of us had hoped for. For now, I'm going to have the comments turned off. I may turn them on once in a while in the future. If you'd like to contact me, you'll find information you need in the About section. Thanks for watching. I look forward to meeting you all very soon. May God bless you and give you the strength and wisdom these final days before the return of the King.